All right, let's talk about significant figures. When it comes down to measurements, there's a certain amount of digits that a measurement can have before the numbers become meaningless in terms of what they represent. Uh, to give you an idea, let's say you have a balance and you're measuring mass. If you're trying to measure the mass of a tiny, tiny grain of salt with a balance that is meant to measure, um, you know, at the very least one gram of a substance, your measurement is going to be pretty insignificant. In fact, your balance won't even recognize that you have anything on it because a grain of salt is going to have a mass so much less than one gram that the balance won't even recognize that as a, as a change in mass. And in a way, when we look at numbers, we have to also take in mind that there might be some numbers that are truly significant and other ones that are not in terms of how much error they carry through. Now, you might end up doing some calculations among numbers and some of those numbers may be more accurate than others. But when you do those type of calculations, the number that has the most error automatically will introduce the greatest amount of error to the overall calculation. So you have to keep an eye out for that number. And I'm going to show you how you do that in this video. First, I need to discuss to you, discuss with you what corresponds as a significant number. All right, any number that is other than zero, if it's written out, it will count as being significant. So this number that has seven, eight, and three, all three of those digits are significant. So this is said to have three significant figures. Also, if you do have zeros, but the zeros are present in a number where a decimal point is actually present, if the zeros are to the right of any non-zero number, then the zero counts. So in this case, the seven, the eight, the three, and the zero will count as being significant because this zero is present after non-zero numbers and there's a decimal point present. However, when you do have zeros, if the zeros do not have a non-zero number preceding them, decimal number or not, the zeros will not count. So notice that this zero doesn't have any non-zero number before it. The second zero also doesn't have any non-zero number before it, so they don't count. The only numbers that count are the seven, the eight, and the three, which are not zero. You may also have numbers where there's no digits, which we refer to as potentially being exact numbers, but the exact numbers you will only encounter if you are told that the number is not a measurement. If the number is a measurement, then technically each one of these digits will count, and it will be assumed that you only have a decimal point here with no decimal places, in which case you will say that this has three significant figures. So here you have to be a bit careful you might need to read a little bit further into what the problem says to make the assessment. So looking at these three examples, in terms of significant figures, the first number has a zero sandwich in between non-zero numbers, so automatically that zero counts. So you have four sig figs. On the second example, you have two numbers, two zero numbers that do not have a non-zero number preceding it. So the first two zeros do not count, but the second one, since it has a number two preceding it, automatically counts. So now you have three digits that are significant. And the last one, depending on what I tell you on the problem, may have only two significant figures, or it may have an infinite number of significant figures. If I tell you it's a measurement, for sure, it has two significant figures only. All right, now we're going to look at how we assess what happens when adding and subtracting. Because um, uh, once again, one of the numbers may have the greatest error and that error will determine the overall error of the final answer. So when adding or subtracting numbers, what you have to basically be on the lookout for is the decimal places. How many decimal places do the numbers have? And more importantly, you go looking for the number that has the least number of decimal places. So look at the first one, you only have one decimal place. Second number, you have two decimal places. And the third number, you have three decimal places. If you add them together, and basically you should calculate or add them together, you're going to find out the following answer you know, from your calculator. But here, you actually have to write down the correct number of significant figures. 
and to do that when carrying out a subtraction or addition you have to determine what's the least number of decimal places and in this case one versus two versus three decimal places one is the least amount so you want to give your answer to only one decimal place meaning that you want to stop at the zero that you have here all right so when you make that assessment what you have to ask yourself is the question well what's the number that comes after the zero if this number is greater than five automatically the zero gets bumped up to one if the number in front of the zero is exactly five, then you you get rid of the five and you keep the zero as is. If the number next to the zero is a five, but then you have some other number after the five, then you will raise the zero up to one. And lastly, if the number directly after the zero is less than five, then you drop that number or series of numbers and you keep the zero. So basically be on the lookout for five. Do you have a value that is uh, greater or equal to five? Uh, that's gonna be how you determine what happens to this number, right? So yes, once again, if the number after the one you're stopping is greater than five, you round up the number. If the number after the one where you're stopping is a five exactly, so there's no other digits, then you round down. If you have a five, and they have and you have all the numbers after the five then you round up the number and if the number after the one you're stopping is less than five then you round down so the answer right here will be 57.1 all right now when multiplying or dividing you want to keep an eye out for the significant figures okay so you have to definitely pay attention to whether multiplication or division is happening as opposed to addition or subtraction so I'm going to use the same numbers, but this time around I'm multiplying and dividing. So perform the calculations in your calculator. Divide 78.3 by 22.44, press enter. Multiply your answer by 1.235, press enter. And you're going to get the following value. So now what you need to do is determine how many sig figs each one of these numbers have. The first one, if you look carefully, you'll say, okay, that's three sig figs. The second number has four sig figs. And the third one also has four sig figs so the least number of significant figures comes from the first number in other words three sig figs so you want your answer to only have three sig figs and that means that you'll stop at one two the third sig fig right here which is the zero so once again you ask yourself the question is the number after the zero greater than five and in this case the answer is yes so that means that the zero gets bumped up to one all right, so now I'm going to show you how you keep track of the significant figures in an example that's a little bit more convoluted, one where you are doing multiple operations before you get to the final answer. And the key idea behind this is that you do not want to round up or round down until you get to the final answer. But what you do need to do is keep track of how many sig figs or decimal places you're dealing with without actually rounding up or down. And you want to start from the innermost portion. So you have big bracket in green. Inside the brackets, inside of the wavy brackets, you have regular brackets. And inside of the regular brackets, you have parentheses. So we're going to want to start right there in the calculation. All right, so we're going to take a look at the 78.3. That's three sig figs. And the 22.4 is four sig figs. And since this is a division, you definitely want to pay attention to the number of sig figs for those two numbers. Your answer by default will have to have three significant figures. So if you carry out that division, 78.3 divided by 22.44, you're going to find out that your calculator gives you this number right here, 3.4893048128. But you know that your answer here has to have three sig figs. Now, this is not the final answer, so what you do not want to do is round up and down, but you do want to keep check of where you're stopping. You need three sig figs, so that means that you have to stop at the eight. That's the third significant figure. All you want to do is write this little hat in, on top of the eight to kind of check and remind yourself that you're dealing only with three sig figs without actually rounding up the number. All right, now, because you're stopping at eight, that means that you have two decimal places in this number. So you want to also write that down as a reference. And specifically, you want to do that because what happens next in this order of operations is an addition and a subtraction. 
So you want to switch over to decimal places. Two decimal places for this number. The next number has three decimal places. And the last one also has three decimal places. So the answer of this addition slash subtraction is going to have to have two decimal places as well. So input the entire number as is, or basically just recollect the answer with, with your calculator, add 1.235 to it, and subtract 0.342 from it. And you're going to find out that the number is now what I'm showing here on the next, uh, the next row, right? 4.382304828. We want two decimal places because that's the least amount of decimal places. So that means that we will stop once again at this eight, right? Since that's the second decimal place. And because we're stopping at the second decimal place for this answer, that means that we have one, two, three, six fix. All right. Now, before we continue with the green number, uh, we have to take care of the brackets in the denominator of this big fraction. So we're gonna first carry out the subtraction that we see here in the parentheses. And for that, we need to look at the decimal places in the blue parentheses. We have three decimal places for 2.389. We have two decimal places from 0.85. So when you carry that subtraction, you're going to find out that this is the answer. But you want to end up with only two decimal places. So that means that you have to stop at three. And because you're stopping at three, that means that this number has three significant figures. All right, the second number here, which is undergoing uh, a division with the first, uh, has a total of three sig figs as well. All right, so we're going to carry out the division right here for the blue bracket. And since we have three sig figs for both, the answer has to have three sig figs. When you divide 1.539 by 8.35, you're going to get this big number. But just keep in mind that you're just going to keep track of where you're stopping. You want three sig figs for this division. So you'll stop at the first, second, third sig fig, which will be the four. And because you're stopping at the four, that means that this number also has three decimal places. But between decimal places and sig figs, since the last operation is division, you really want to pay attention to the sig figs. And both of those numbers have three sig figs each. So when you carry out the division between them, you want to end up with three sig figs. The first number is the first sig fig, this one is the second, and then the first decimal place is the third significant figure. So you're stopping at the seven. And then you ask yourself the question, since you are at the end of the calculation, is the next number greater than five? And in this circumstance, it is. So that means that your seven, where you're stopping, gets bumped up to eight. And by doing all of this, you have finally found the value. Now, if you were to start truncating the numbers, you know, like stopping at the eight and raising it up to nine and, and doing that every which way, eventually by the time you get to this final answer, you might end up introducing so much error that you no longer get 23.8, you might get 23.7 or 23.6. And the value is kind of close to the final one, but it's now inaccurate. And you will get marked down for that on Canva. So be careful with this type of process. All right. so. With that being said, I cover all the big things that I need to tell you about this. We'll have a little bit more to say in class when we meet uh, via Zoom. Um, but this covers the first uh, two chapters of the book. So I um, hope you enjoyed it and there'll be 40 more lectures to go. So I'll see you in the next ones.